In studio for a little bit is Mr. Rich Lamb. He is the chairman of the board of directors of Cyport. Mr. Rich, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. Let's start here. Cyport. Grr, what a mess. Light at the end of the tunnel or a little of both? A little of both. Um, I don't want to misrepresent this and say that all is grand and every, we're in the clear on anything. That's certainly not the case. What we've been doing is making small strides, not only in reopening Cyport, but identifying what happened and getting that answer correct. So what happened? What, what happened? Yeah. yeah. So what happened is, is first of all, Cyport, the, a little history, you have to understand the history. It started out really in the late 80s, early 90s with a traveling cart, essentially, went to schools and malls. Mm -hmm. That then grew to uh, a facility at the old Santa Maria building. My birthday party in the fifth grade was there. Yeah. Then in 1998, a $21 million facility was constructed uh, with the help of the city of Shreveport and the state of Louisiana and some large local and out non-local donors. Uh, the facility today is about 92,000 square feet, a specialized facility. Um, over a period of time, as y'all cited last week, Southport had a payroll of over $2 million a year. So that uh, that rumor, if you will, is legitimate. That's that, fact. That, that is a fact. And you can see that if you go online to the state legislative audits, it has that information. Mm -hmm. And so one thing we've been doing is is going back and looking at how long that lasted and how is it able to sustain itself. Now, pardon me, you had uh, first joined, became a member of the Cyport Board in what, January of 2015? That's correct. Um, at that point, what access did you have to the records, to the fact that you guys are spending $2 million plus a year in salaries, and did anybody go, that's, that's an awful lot? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, we were given information, some of it accurate, some of it I don't believe was accurate. I can't say that it was intentional. But at the same time, we were always given consultant reports. Um, a common practice for nonprofits is to get a grant to cover a consulting report. And one of the ones that quickly came so, out. So pardon me. So there was sort of another layer of bureaucracy between the actual people, uh, the people who were actually running Cyport and you and the other board members. That, that's correct. There's an outside source, which you believe you rely on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would analogize it to this. Each election, let's say take a presidential election. The Democrats are going to have the Brookings Institute come out with some data that supports what they say. The Republicans are going to have something from the Heritage Foundation or something similar supporting what they say. So you can see where third-party reports can have conflicting information. Sure. That it make them stupid people. But I assume that was just an added, uh, not to get way off track, but that's sure. just another added cost, right? I mean, that, it was paid for by somebody else. Okay. Yes, and that's the thing. That if we would have paid for it, it could have been very self-serving. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we couldn't afford to pay for it. Sure. Second of all, it was it was a, a non-affiliated fa foundation paid for it and these people came in and said one are accounting practices or best practices so you have this third party telling you that it also says that Cyport's payroll was slightly above what other things were um, I'll tell you the thing that caught me off guard was not so the number is the number of employees if you walked in the back of Cyport you saw a ton of cubicles and it reminded me I lived in DC for a year it reminded me of something you see in DC one of those government buildings you know when there were first I think there were the 75 employees and and you laid off I think it was 35 that's not correct that's uh, incorrect we only have five people in our payroll right now five five people close to full-time two or three part-time that work in our educational outreach covered by grants and so I think but there were a number of reports that said that when you guys closed down site that 70 something people lost their jobs 72 yes okay. you're, you're correct and we mm -hmm. rehired five okay and so um, I guess the point I was making was when it comes to spending two and a half million uh, two million dollars a year in salaries correct what I said a couple a bunch of times was it's not employees 50s uh, 50 through 74 that are killing you it's usually one through ten is that a fair assumption not necessarily, no, not at all. In fact, one thing I heard last week, y'all mentioned a three hundred thousand dollar person. Not that, accurate. Not nowhere even close. What was your highest paid employee making? Ann Fumarello was paid one hundred thirteen thousand dollars a year base. Okay. And she had health insurance and stuff like that. Car allowance and things like that. A limited car allowance. Okay. Was there? So I don't know. You'll be honest. And was there some graft? Were there some things done wrong that you you guys could uncover? Not. There were there were maybe bad judgment calls. And I want to be real careful before I criticize people that were on the board or before me because I don't know what information they were presented with. But I will say that the temptation to use the restricted funds and other things to build up payables was to meet payroll. These weren't people that took money to go buy jet skis or go on trips to Hawaii. Essentially, and this sounds a little harsh, but their hearts were bigger than their brains. You know, they were so passionate about what they were doing. They made some bad financial decisions. Um, but nowhere have I seen any graph or anything Who like that. was 
who was, was anyone you talked about this accounting firm, sort of this layer of bureaucracy between the people who ran Cyport and you on the board. That that was a one that was one time deal. We had two of those, but it wasn't every every year. So it it wasn't an accounting firm. So what I was going to lead to was was how did you guys on the board, if if there was this layer of protection, this prophylaxis of of what was going on, how did you guys find out that uh, if you're being told everything's okay, how did you find out it wasn't? Really, what what came crashing down was the audit that came out late, came out in March mm -hmm. 2017. Um, also, at that same time, and this will blow you away, January 2017, uh, we had a, another consultant tell us that we didn't have enough employees, which is the board was astounded. Like, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. We had 72 people. And so uh, uh, that was it, it, something's wrong here with what we're being told. Well, I, I guess the question is, did the people did the people who were operating Cyport did did you said their heart was bigger than their brain? Did they have a sense of we're running this thing into the ground financially, or did they just kind of go, well, everything will work out. We'll get more donors. It, it was very much uh, things work themselves out, which made people very – people really got onto them and said, like, look, that's not how things work. It was always let's go raise big amounts of money. 